What's up everybody and welcome back to Off The Shelves. If you're new to this channel or to this series, this is my Blu-ray haul, Blu-ray collection video where I talk about all of the titles I picked up over the past month, give you my quick little reviews on them and tell them whether you should go out and buy it, stream it, or skip it altogether. So, not a huge collection, maybe about nine titles this time, but I wanted to make sure I got it out for you guys. And without further ado, the first title we have is the 4K release of Jaws. I bought the Steelbook, I believe it was a Best Buy exclusive. Um, what more can you say about Jaws? I mean, it's one of the greatest movies ever made, one of the best. Uh, Steven Spielberg, one of his best. Haven't seen it in quite a while. I watched it this past weekend. Loved it just as much as I always had. The 4K looked really good. Uh, I can't really compare it to the Blu-ray or not to see how much of an improvement it is, but it looked really good on 4K, and it was a must-buy. So go out and buy it. Don't really need my endorsement for this one, do you? Because I bought that one, I figured I needed to go ahead and buy Jaws 2. I haven't even taken it out of the packaging yet. But uh, Jaws 2 through 4, I have little to no experience with. I have seen Jaws, Jaws 2 as a kid. As a very little kid, I like this one more because you see the shark more, from what I remember. But quickly that changed, obviously. So uh, I haven't seen this one in years. I really don't give, have a recommendation for you. I do know that this is the only Jaws sequel that some people like. Uh, I think Jaws 3 and 4 are pretty much universally hated. So. I don't think I'll be buying those, but I will be watching them because uh, 31 on 31, baby. Right after that, we have Brahms The Boy 2. This was actually sent to me by Universal. It was the first time a, a studio has sent me anything. They sent me a little package that had this and some caramel popcorn and a blanket and some dice and some other stuff that probably has relevance to the movie. So that was really cool. Uh, very grateful for Universal to reach out to me and do that. Um, I wish it was for a movie franchise that I was a fan of, but nonetheless, I have not watched this yet. Uh, I've heard that if you're a fan of the first one, you're not going to like this one, so I don't know if me not being a fan of the first one means I will like this one, but uh, it was one of those horror movies that came out earlier this year that I just did not go see, so I have no review for you, but uh, thank you Universal nonetheless. The 4K Steelbook of Braveheart goes right alongside with the 4K Steelbook for Gladiator. They always release these movies together, which is weird to me because it's not like the same director. I mean, you got Mel Gibson and Ridley Scott, um, and they're, they have some similarities, I guess, but it, it, you always see these released. There's always a two-pack, or they release the Blu-ray together, now they release the 4K together, but nonetheless, two five out of five best of all time movies. I mean, these are movies that are must-haves in your collection. They are must-sees. Uh, I probably prefer Gladiator if I was to pick one, but um, I love these movies. So I haven't seen either of them in quite a few years. Look forward to rewatching them, and I'm sure they're gonna look awesome on 4K. And they have a sexy ass steelbook here, so irresistible. The Arrow release for 16 Candles. Um, this is another movie that I have not seen in quite a few years, but I love pretty much all the John Hughes movies that I've seen. There's very few of his that I have not seen. Uh, 16 Candles is definitely up there. A lot of memorable stuff. I mean, it's just one of his classics. This might be his most popular. It's one that certainly gets referenced the most in other movies. So I saw they had an Arrow release. I don't remember how good the Blu-ray, just generic release was. So I figured I'd go ahead and pick this one up. So go out and buy this one as well. <sighs> Woody, I'm sorry, buddy. I still haven't seen it yet, but I went and bought uh, the Days of Thunder 4K. If you remember my last episode, I bought War of the Worlds, and I was talking about how this and Top Gun also were released. I've never been a gigantic fan of Top Gun, uh, and I've never seen this one. And my buddy Woody Bowen, the one that does a lot of my designs, was like, Days of Thunder is awesome. You got to check it out. So um, I have not had a chance to prove Woody correct yet, but I have purchased this to hopefully prove him correct, or have a point of argument with him where I'm like, dude. But nonetheless, I don't have a rating for you on this one. The only TV series I've bought in quite a while, and that is the final season of Game of Thrones. Um, I actually am one of the few people that did not have a whole lot of problems with this final season. Now, I did not watch Game of Thrones since the beginning. Uh, I watched season one and two like maybe five or six years ago, and I liked it okay. HBO shows are always very taxing for me. They're never shows that I can just get addicted to and binge. But uh, right before the final season aired, Holly really wanted to watch it, so we ended up going through the whole series in maybe a month, month or so. So I ended up watching the finale, the final season, like maybe three weeks after everybody else. And 
Honestly, although I do agree that the last two seasons kind of being shorter seasons probably wasn't to the show's benefit with how long the other seasons were and how much they let certain storylines breathe for multiple episodes, multiple seasons sometimes, I understand the criticism of how rushed some of these story elements felt. But other than that, I really didn't have a whole lot of problems with it. I didn't have a problem with who ended up being the king. I didn't have a problem with the logic of how everybody, all, all everybody's fates, how that all kind of lined up. Um, certainly some elements that felt a little bit soon in the last two episodes between uh, Daenerys Targaryen and Jon Snow. But nonetheless, I'm one of the few people that actually liked this final season. It's not one of my favorite final seasons of all time, but I watched it and after hearing so many people say like, worst ever, trash, petitions to redo the series, like that shit ever works. I watched it and I went, <laughs> okay, it worked fine, but nonetheless, uh, I would say go out and buy this if you're a Game of Thrones fan, although everybody watching this video right now is screaming, no, skip it, horrible, fuck this show. No, I thought it was pretty good. Last two titles, and they kind of go together, so I guess I'll show them both at the same time, and that is the 4K release of Dunkirk and Interstellar. Uh, when they had the big Christopher Nolan 4K uh, box set and all that other stuff come out last year, uh, I only bought the Prestige and the Batman movies, so... These are the two movies that I have complicated feelings with as far as Christopher Nolan films. Other than that, I've loved pretty much all of his movies, um, but I've only seen them once. Uh, I, Interstellar, I really liked this movie until the last 10 or 15 minutes and it got really weird and cosmic and it just didn't work for me. I will see if that changes on a rewatch. Everything before that I thought was fantastic. Dunkirk... I'm not really a war movie guy. I've said that before, even though I buy a lot of the classic ones so that I can eventually watch them. I'm not somebody that has a lot of favorite movies of all time that are war films. So there's one thing. I was also extremely tired and not in a good mood when I went to see this in theaters, so I'm curious if that had anything to do with it. But I was not a big fan of Dunkirk. That was the first Christopher Nolan movie where I was like, nah, not for me. So. Uh, obviously you guys know I'm doing a Christopher Nolan review series, so I wanted to go ahead and buy these to complete my collection so that I could do my review series, and so hopefully both of these movies, my second watch, will be better than my first watch. But if I'm going off of my first watch, this was a stream it, and this was, I'd probably say a really high stream it, like fractions below a go out and buy it just because of the ending. But I have a feeling I'm going to like this one more, and I think this one is probably going to stay about the same. But we'll see how that goes. In a couple of weeks, you'll have your answer. That is it, guys. That is this month's Off the Shelves episode. So tell me down below if you've seen any of these movies that I have not seen, and let me know what your thoughts are. If you want to argue Game of Thrones, why not? Go ahead and throw those down below as well. I'm sure I'm going to be dodging those hate comments as it is. So uh, thank you guys for watching this. Please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button if you are not already a subscriber. This is an interesting video to find me on. I do a lot of movie reviews and video game reviews and things like that. This is just a little monthly thing that I do, a little bit more casual. So if you enjoyed this, you will definitely enjoy all the rest of my content. And remember, guys, as always, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be. Hey.